Yeah. For as he thinks in his. Oh, so is he. Yes. So is he. Because of you, God many a times in your lifetime you are going to experience what is about to happen and this will keep happening over and over in your lifetime it will not be a one-time thing because of you God will create an atmosphere he will create a spirit your job alone cannot give you the money you need to do the great things you want to do come to terms with that you have to you must come to terms with being a negative a conflict brewing, a conflict making, a complaining person, a quarrelsome person, and a careless person, a person who I don't care. The reason is because your money alone, your job alone, your family alone, your race alone, your gender alone, the political group that you belong to alone is not enough. Is not enough. Oh boy. Okay. The last person who came in, you need to please hang up. You need to please hang up. Okay. Yep. It's not enough to give you what you want in life. I have seen people who work as medical doctors, bankers, lawyers, judges, engineers, Wall Streets, top business people. They drove nice cars. They live in fine houses. But as they grow older, and they began to retire from life, they began to downsize. They didn't really create wealth when that opportunity was created. In fact, they didn't know how to create wealth. If there is anything that really happened to people as they grow from teenager to young adult, to adult, to middle age, etc., is that nobody teaches them, and they themselves, even if nobody taught you, you have to be sensitive enough to find somebody to teach you. And many of us, because of our educational calibers, our business knowledge, we are too arrogant to ask somebody for help. In areas in which we know we are not good at. So we remain poor. That's what happened to people. I have been sent this morning to tell you this. God is not dead. God is not a matter of argu argumentation or debate. Heaven is there. It's a physical place. It's not a spiritual place. 
let me bring it back to you again. The city where God lives, the planet where God lives, the galaxies where God lives, is a physical place. It's not a spiritual place. It's like asking us whether the earth is a spiritual place or it's a physical place. Whether the moon is a spiritual place or is the moon a spiritual place or is it physical? Is it? Is it physical or is it spiritual? It's physical. Where do the aliens, the aliens we see them in UFOs, in their own spacecraft, do they live in a physical place or do they live in a spiritual? Are they, are they spiritual beings or are they physical beings? Who are they? They are, they are physical beings. Yeah, they are physical. Are the angels of God? Yeah, are the angels of God? Are they physical beings or are they spiritual beings? Who are they? They are spiritual beings. They are, they are what? They are what? No, they are physical beings. They are physical beings. You see? Yeah, because you can see them. They can manifest as humans. Even though Jesus said God is spirit, he is saying that so that you can know who you are. You are spirit, but spirit are physical beings also. You are a combo. That's what makes you you. Fallen angels, are they physical? Or are they just spirit beings? They are physical. But they are spirit beings just like we are. We are physical, but we are spirit beings. Was Jesus a spirit? Or was Jesus physical? Human. You can touch him. Even when he rose from the dead, you can touch him. You can embrace him, hug him, eat with him. But he's a spirit being. But he's a physical being too. And that's what makes him Jesus. God, human, just like you. You are spirit being. But you are physical. <laughs> the door is shut. Jesus entered into the room. The upper room where the disciples were staying. And all of them were, whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? Nobody went to open the door. And he just came through the door just like that. Are you serious? Who the hell are you? And they look at him. He is the Jesus who died three days ago. Whom they fled, whom they betrayed. The men, the men betrayed him and ran away. He said, I am Jesus. And they knew this is him. Was he a spirit? Or was he the physical Jesus that was with them? Who was he? People, please answer me. Was he a spirit or was he the physical Jesus? Huh? You guys don't even know? The physical Jesus. He's the physical Jesus. Yeah. He took food ate before them. He told Thomas, Doubter, philosopher, come, put your hand here. Do you see where they nailed me to the cross? Mm -hmm. Do you see this side? Look at my side. Look at my legs. And at that point, he knew that he was dealing with with what his doubt, his brain, his mind couldn't carry. That this was not a mere human being. This is the Son of God. This is the Son of God. Our Jesus is back physically.
dead people, people who have died on, the, on Good Friday, they rose. On the day of the resurrection, they also rose. I mean the resurrection of Jesus. And they went into the city and showed themselves. The Bible does not tell us, the gospel doesn't tell us the rest about, about them. But what I know is that when Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life, you better believe it. That's why nobody is capable of killing me or you. Why? Because life lives in you. Life is protecting you. It's not just the medicine, your vitamins, the supplement you are taking, the surgery you go through that is that is giving you life. There is a man who is also God. He is the one that is carrying you. So nobody can kill you. No sickness can carry you. Because life is in you. He lives in you. Whether you believe it or not, he lives Amen. in you. Yeah. He lives in me. Amen. So I don't Amen. care how you think about it. Those of you who are, who are in the house of training and formation, you started receiving high academic things. And let me give it to you straight. What you are receiving are for master's program and for PhD programs. So just know that. I'm not dealing with kids here. <laughs> so that's why you are, you're going to start dealing with when you start coming into terms with cognitive imperatives of Immanuel Kant when you start dealing with Benedict Spinoza's if you have taken time to look at your work last night on perception and religion and sociology of religion yes. you start looking at what okay. people have spoken about religion, how they think, how society view this, so that if you are carried about by religion, you should know how the world really perceive you, and perceive your religious articles and doctrines and canons, that they don't care. Because human beings have other things too, to pursue outside religion, so that religion will not be the only thing you focus in life. When Karl Marx begin to tell you that religion is the crack cocaine of idiots, of fools, of the masses, then you know how people think. And that is why you should be better than the ordinary church folk who go to church because that is their Alpha and Omega is their church and their pastors and their bishops. And you don't care that the majority of people out there don't care about what you worship, who he is. They want to see whether what you worship can make you prosper. Do you understand? People want to know whether what you bow down to can make you prosper. That is how they are going to listen. You can perform all the miracles you want to perform. You can heal all the sick you want to heal. It doesn't move the world of academic. The world is moved by intelligence, by sensitivity, and the mind realm. That's it. Amen. Not by spiritual perception. And they want to see whether you can turn your religion, or whether your religion can make you into a better human being, whether your religion can make you prosper financially, materially, money, money, money. Like the Vietnamese says, they say, we only think about this. They will put two fingers together and they will shake it. Whether you can turn your religion into science and technology, can you produce something that will help human beings? God has sent me this morning to tell you this. He said this. Because of you, in this lifetime, you are going to experience certain things that will keep happening to you. And we call that the spirit and atmosphere of favor. The spirit and atmosphere of favor. 
The reason is that you have advantage on the earth. You have advantage on this earth. And what is the advantage you have on the earth? The advantage you have on the earth is you fully yielded to God the Father. Your owner, your boss, is Jesus. Amen. And now you have a second boss. Amen. You have a second boss, the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So oh. if you did not know it, right. today you are going to tell Jesus and the Holy Ghost to begin to write you a check. That's how your poverty is going to stop. Tell them from today, do it like a child will do it. I want you to begin to write me a check. I want you to begin to pay me a salary. This is how much money I am going to be spending every day, every week, every month. And I want that prayer right now. Ask them because they own you. The person who owns you is the person you should go to for your paycheck. Is the person you should go to for your groceries, not government. Not your family members. Go to him for your paycheck. That's your owner. That's why Jesus is called Redeemer. Don't you know what the Redeemer means? A Messiah. You call him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And you think that he's not a king? Are you serious? Ask him right now. Everybody lift up your voice and tell God to give you a paycheck beginning from now. You need a paycheck and you need more than a paycheck. Lift up your voice. Pray aloud. I want to hear people pray aloud. You cannot tell Jesus is your king. And, and then you are the one struggling. You are struggling even to pay bill. Light bill you can't pay. You can't maintain your car. The car is spoiling. You are driving a Bukuro Maja. You are struggling to pay your children's school fees. You are struggling to eat. And then you are, you are calling Jesus King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What are you doing with a king who cannot pay those things for you? He wants to ask him for it now and he will perform it. A king that cannot buy you a house. Why is he your king? Kings buy houses for their for, for, for the subject, build houses for them. That's what makes him a king. Ask him to build you a house or buy you one. Amen. 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 Let's continue. Amen. 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 Stop praying. Let's continue. He has heard you enough. Because who you want him to be for you is what he's going to be for you. Who you want Jesus to be for you is what he's going to be for you. If you want him to be a, a story, then you go to church and hear pastors and preachers tell you story and preach to you. And then you go home. Nothing. Because the church, the church is too dignified to ask for something. Everything is corporate. It's corporately done. It's done, it's done with dignity. And quietness. You don't want to offend God. You don't want to shout and disturb God. Your voice is too loud. And most of what they do in church, they are doing it for themselves, not for God. Nobody fools me with religion. Nope. I'm too intelligent. I'm too smart for that. I don't care whether you've seen Jesus or whether you've seen angels. You can't fool me. You saw angels, it's for you and your angel. You saw Jesus, it's for you and your Jesus that you saw. Not for me. That's right. I want my own experience. I don't need your own. 
Are you guys listening to what I'm saying this morning? I need my own experience of Jesus. I don't need your own experience of Jesus. Keep your own experience of Jesus to yourself. Keep your own experience with the Holy Spirit to yourself. Keep your experience between you and angels to yourself. Keep your own miracle to yourself. I am looking for my own miracle. I'm not looking for your own. So go away with your own. I don't need it. I don't need you. I don't need you to come and tell me about how Jesus visited you. And after that, what are you going to do? You are telling people those stories so that they can come and give you money. Do you think that we are idiots in the contemporary era? Yes. I'm not an idiot, baby. I'm not an idiot, sir. I'm not an idiot. No, I'm not a fool. My job is not... Is, I was not born to come and build you a castle, buy you a jet with my money. And then, when I have a need and I call yes. you, you say you don't even know me. Because many people send you money. So, that is why my money is not important anywhere. Can you buy me a jet? Wow. Can you buy me a car? Can you send my kids to school? No, you don't. Mm. So don't let people come to tell you of the experiences with God. And that is why those of you in the house of training and formation, you are blessed. That's right. Amen. You need Amen. your own car. You need your own. I see people fighting over a house that does not belong to them. A landlord will tell somebody that a renter to vacate. They will save them paper legally, lawfully from the court. And you will see, you will see a renter fighting a landlord. Why not fight over your own? See people fighting over somebody else's husband or over a man that does not even belong to them. Fighting over a woman that doesn't belong to them. Fighting over a child that doesn't belong to them. Fighting over a house that doesn't belong to them. God has sent me here to tell you that he wants to give you your own. Your own. You can Amen. say, that is your car. That is your house. Amen. Hallelujah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I want my own. Yep. Yeah. I am going to create I for you. Spirit, listen to how we put it. Go and tell them this morning that this week is a week of multiple creation of events of spirit and atmosphere of favor. Spirit Amen. and atmosphere of favor. Hallelujah. Somebody, Amen. God is going to tell angels to be good to you. God is going to tell humans to be good to you. God is going to speak to the mountain, the river, the sea, the ocean, the moon, the stars. He's going to tell planets and this planet to be good to you. Amen. God is going to tell businesses, businesses to be good to you, banks to be good to you, governments to be good to you, departments of governments to be good to you, families to be good to you, groups to be nice and kind and caring and good to you. But listen very carefully. Listen very, very carefully. Listen very carefully. You cannot take carelessness into a place, into a place where spirit and atmosphere of favor is reigning. You cannot take carelessness into that place. If you take it into that place, it will not work for you. Everybody else, it will work for them, but it will not work for you. If you are a careless person, God is watching you. You receive a paycheck. You cannot manage your paycheck. First, do your, uh, your, your, if you have a car note, you pay your car note. You have a mortgage, you pay the mortgage. Or you are renting a, you are renting a, a house or renting a, a, a unit, an apartment, you pay for those things. If what you are doing is you get your paycheck from your job 
and you fly out to Miami, you fly out to New York, you fly out to Las Vegas, you fly out to different places, and then you are praying to God to create spirit and atmosphere of favor for you. It doesn't work that way. Because wherever you see God planting, listen to the word I'm using, not just that he creates, wherever you see God planting spirit and atmosphere of favor, he is going to excite something in you so that the spirit, spirit and atmosphere of favor will work 100% for you. Amen. Listen to listen to the name spirit and atmosphere. So it means you fall into it or it fall on you. You hear about the Holy Spirit? How did the Holy Spirit come to people? The Holy Ghost fall on them like rain fall on people. Is that right? Is that the language that the Bible uses? Does it does it talk about the Holy Ghost fell on them? Is that right? Or they, they, or they fall into the Holy Ghost. Or they walk into it. Yep. The Holy Ghost fall on them. But there is another side to it. You can, without knowing it, suddenly stumble into spirit and atmosphere of favor. Just suddenly. It does not just happen chances and coincidences happens because somebody a being has put event together for you and that is what we call mm -hmm. spirit and atmosphere yeah. of favor you you suddenly walked into it you mm -hmm. fell into it you fell into it or it falls on you it comes on both ways Saul, the first king of Israel, he wasn't a prophet, doesn't know anything about spirit. He doesn't know how the spirit of God works. Immediately he was anointed, the spirit fell on him. And as everything that Samuel told him was going to happen to him, when he would be going back home, he, he fell. For example, he saw a band of prophets. Because those band of prophets carried spirit and atmosphere of the spirit. The atmosphere of the spirit was walking there. He automatically fell into it. When, he, when Saul went to go and kill Samuel, arrest Samuel and destroy Samuel in Ramah, as he walked into the city of the prophet, what happened to him? The atmosphere was charged with life of God, charged with power of God, charged with spirit of God, charged with the best things you can ever think of. So if you walk into the city of the prophet, what happened to you? If you are coming with bad intention, or you even are coming with good intention, what happened? You will fall under that atmosphere. You cannot be yourself. You cannot do what they say he lay there naked. Look at a king with sword and armies that went to go and arrest Samuel and then you are reaching the entrance into the city of the prophet and you fell. Everyone fell and lay there like drunken people, laying down there naked. Everybody is looking at their telly. Everybody is looking at their manku manku. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Let me give you another example. Yeah. Can you believe those are people who came to come and fight? To come and arrest you. You're a king. I sit on the throne and you're a mere prophet. And you forgot the man you are coming to kill is the man who anointed you. You did it. You you and your clan never knew that you th there is a king among you. He did it for you. And you turn against him. Another king came to see the man of God, the prophet of God. To come and capture that prophet because whatever whatever they were discussing 
whatever military logistic and strategy they were planting and wanted to carry out in Israel. The man from God that God has planted in the city to protect the city was hearing and seeing everything. And he will go and tell the king of Israel. When the enemy finally decided to come and arrest the man of God, what happened? The man of God, the man of God said that they should all become blind. And every one of them became blind. And they were laid by the hand, given bread and water. And then their eyes were opened. And they were ashamed of what has happened to them. If the man of God wanted all of them to be killed, they would have all been killed. He asked them to go back. They went back shame, full of shame, back to their country. Because they saw, if they were to be killed, they would have been killed. And they never came back to Israel. Why? The people came under the atmosphere and spirit of the Lord, heavily. And they couldn't operate. It has always been so. Anybody who try to do you wrong will find themselves coming under a very strange atmosphere of the Lord. That will destroy them. Let's say it the way it is. Yeah. Or, I mean, if they are, if, if, if they are able to run without their legs being broken. But something is, something is going to be broken in their life so that they will never repeat it again. <laughs> there are Amen. people who attack me and say to me, what do you yeah. think you are? What kind of prophet of God are you? That are, you know people who, who will come to check out your ministry and then they will, or your church, and they will be talking rubbish because you don't want to do what they want, their way. Or every one of them, I kept a record. They are all without jobs. Many of them have got mentally insane. Mentally insane. They've been to they've been to a neuropsychiatric hospital. They've been there for three years, some of them, before they release them. You were boasting, you were making mouth against me, so you pay for it. Why? Because I did not set up a shrine for myself. The shrine set me up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. That's how it is. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Almost all that group, not one single one of them has a job. One called me last year and was begging for money that she's now going to be pawning is it going to the pawn shop to go and pawn something? How is that my concern? You came and boosted? Because there are people who come to you with the spirit of sabotage. I will deal with that as a separate service. They come to you to sabotage you. To create conflict. That's the reason why they come into your life. Nothing more, nothing less. They come to sabotage you. And how do you know a spirit of sabotage? You see a spirit of competition. They want to compete with you. They think what you are doing is a business. They think, they think church is business for you. Because that's what they saw with other people who came into church ministry as a business or as a place to control people or as a place to make money. I did not come into church business for that reason. I came to church Amen. ministry because Amen. Jesus said to me, follow me. I want you to go to seminary. You get ordained. And while I was in seminary, the spirit, I was constantly falling into the spirit and atmosphere of the spirit. Constantly. Of favor. Of miracles. The miraculous was happening. Why? Because I came naive and innocent. I did not come as a retired teacher or as a retired headmaster of a school, head teacher, 
or a retired principal of a school, or a retired chief of police, or a retired military person, or a retired banker, a retired lawyer, a retired engineer, a retired people who were working in tobacco industry. Those were the people who were my colleagues. I went to seminary with people who have already finished their first degree. Some of them, they are masters. And look at me, I'm coming from high school to join this group of people. What did you think that I know? I stay in seminary. Yeah, I stay in seminary for three months. Listen to me. I stay in seminary for three months. I did not know what the professors were doing or saying or what I was doing there. I didn't know. I'm asked to study Hebrew. I have to draw a line here, put a line there, put a little tail on the line, make this like look like a frog, and that is Hebrew. I didn't know nothing. <laughs> oh my God. Yep. Yeah, the capital of L and the and the small letter of L is not the same. Nothing is the same in Greek. Nothing. The capital of N N and the small letter of N is not the same. I like what the heck am I doing here? What kind of language is this? In English, L is L. And then you write it, you put dots here, you put either the dot is on the butt, or the dot is on the head, or the dot is by the ear. I mean, what is, what am I doing here? You cross, you put, you write a, an O, you draw the O like an egg, you put a minus in, 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 in the center of it. Seriously? Tita? Yes. I say I got it. <laughs> Then they are teaching me <laughs> ethics, the grammar, the ontology, yep, the this, the that. I have no idea what those grammar means. I was having headache. Different kind of philosophies, logic. You better know who is sending you, who is your boss. God said I should tell you that either you are going to stumble into the spirit or atmosphere of favor or he will create one instantly for you. That's what he will do. But you must also begin today to ask God to restrain you from being careless. Thank you. To restrain you from being Amen. careless. Amen. Yep. Do not be somebody that spend more money trying to go on vacation. Don't be somebody that go to spend between five hundred to a thousand dollars trying to do a bad day. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 to do a bad day or to go on vacation. Don't do it. It's a sign of carelessness. Don't blow your money trying, trying to. There will be times that other people will celebrate you. They will put it together for you, not you putting it together for yourself. That's why all of you have seen that because of the way our mission is set up, I don't celebrate bad days. I use my bad day to volunteer to do things for people, to teach my congregation, to equip my partners. The time will come that my partners 
will invite me. You come to Baltimore, Maryland, and everybody in Baltimore wanna celebrate. They 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 have they they have decided that they are the one who wanna do it that year. Then I'll go. They will do it. They will do it. They will celebrate me. That will be fine. Or that it will be people in Chicago who wanna do it that year. Let people celebrate you because they recognize your influence and what. Don't go and blow the money for one day ceremony. Don't go and do a wedding with so much money. That's why I like European mentality. Those of them who are smart, they've taught us how life should be done. They call a justice of the peace to come to the house and they have one or two people there and the person recite the articles of marriage, exchange of rings, you sign the document, he or she gives you your copy and walk away. And you continue what you are doing. Somebody died, you do not go to go and keep that person in a mortuary for one year, paying the mortuary. A dead person, the money that that person could not contribute when the person was alive, you are, are you going to sell that person children to pay for that person being in an ice box? Especially poor people who died without no money, nothing. Their family want to use that burial to make as much money as possible before they will bury the person. That's what they are doing now. Wedding, baptism, ordination, funerals, are now money making something. Why do you want to put a poor person who doesn't have money to pay for his own mortuary? You want to go and put that poor person in a mortuary for a whole year? What, is, what are you guys doing there? Hmm. Shame, on Shame on them. Do you see Queen Elizabeth that was buried within two weeks? People were already getting frustrated and angry that it was taken that long to bury, to, to, to allow that woman to go. That woman is already gone. Why are you keeping her? Should not be more than a few days, a week. One leaders who want to come, let them come. That woman is dead. Bury her. And then you can continue the, the whatever you want to get out of it. You can do later. In America here, in Europe, in the Western tradition, somebody died one day or two days, they buried the person, everybody returned back to their to their jobs. Go to Africa and India. Yeah. Go to Africa and India, Caribbean, the Middle East. No way. They are going to keep that person to cry and cry and cry so that they can eat and eat and eat food and drink alcohol and smoke every day because they know that if the person is buried they will not be having those things anymore so they are keeping the person as long as possible so that they can eat they can kill cow goat sheep they can eat smoke marijuana smoke cigar free it's free they keep coming you tell them you want to bury the person too they tell you god punish you try it you'll see Because they want to eat and drink and enjoy themselves. They say, you want to bury the idiot who did not give us no food, no drink, nothing, contribute something. We are going to use him to enjoy ourselves before we bury him. That's what they are doing. And if you, that's why you have to watch where you are going to do wedding or ordination and, and birthday and all of that. Because people are going to put you in debt. They will make you suffer. And you think they are coming because they love you. They are coming because of what they will get out of it. If you want to celebrate a birthday, you want to celebrate, uh, what is it? Ordination, burial, uh, what is it? A, a naming ceremony, baptism, all kind of stuff. Funeral, watch and see how many people are going to put down money, big money, for that. For that, that's how you ask them. 
You want this wedding to be a big wedding. How much are you? You, you, who is talking? You see, those who want it to be an elaborate uh, wedding, they don't even have the money. They are looking at you to bring money to come and do it for them. You tell them, how much do you have to put down? How much do you, each of you have to put down? Who will bail the cat? This silly cat has been eating us. That's what the rat and the mouse said. We want to keep track of this cat. You know? Somebody, we need to put a bell on the neck of this cat so that we know where the cat is at any time so that it doesn't uh, disturb our enjoyment in this house also. This cat is enjoying, we should enjoy it too. Everybody say, yeah, yeah, this silly cat. Yeah, we must put a bell around his neck. Yeah, we must do something on this cat. And then the old mama mouse, the old daddy rat says, then who among you will go and put a bell? On the cat's neck. Everybody says, are you serious? Not me. I'm not going. Talk is cheap, eh? Talk is cheap. <laughs> Talk is cheap. Anytime you see an angel appear to a human being for good, Spirit and atmosphere of favor is created on the spot. Eliezer. When Abraham spoke with Eliezer for Eliezer to go and find a wife for Isaac. Spirit and atmosphere of favor was created and went ahead of him. Beginning today, always ask God. Every day of your life, spend some time to ask God. Release spirit and atmosphere of favor to go ahead of me. So that as I am in, it meets me here. Or I fall into it. Or when I go out there, it's there. Waiting for me. I fall into it. Or it follows me. Because your money is not enough to give you all that you need. And that is why when a man or a woman decide to be a drug dealer, a prostitute, whether openly or secretly, doesn't matter how, you have made God, you are mocking God's, you are telling God that God is not able to take care of you. You have actually made God cheap. Why? You didn't make God cheap. You've actually made yourself cheap and weak. You are a weak person and you are a cheap person. Elizabeth has followed me religiously. That's the way I put it. She has, which means she has followed me carefully and sincerely and truthfully. That woman. That girl, I call her a girl. She has never given me $500. Never. Since I knew her. It's always from a thousand up. To 10, 20, 30, 50, 100,000. That skinny little girl. That beautiful girl from India. She's sensitive. She will call and say, what is it that is lacking in the house? I want to fill it up. I want to supply. That's what, that's what she said. All the time. And what happened? I then asked God to create spirit and atmosphere of favor for her. And strange event began to happen in her life. One of them happened last week. Strange events. Money-wise. We are not talking of spiritual. We are talking of physical things. Began to happen. Money-wise. Material-wise. Since that woman met me. 
Amen. She told me, I want to drive only the best cars that Jesus can give me. And I asked her, what is your best car? She said, Mercedes. That's what she's been driving. Now the next car, the next car is going to be better than a Mercedes. She's already told me. And she will get it easy. I told her, your job is going to be needing you. Your job will be calling you. She said, and yeah, your job will be asking you to come and do the do that. It happened. They are calling her. Ooh. But Lord, you guys do not want to hear. You guys do not want to hear the big ones. You don't want to hear. Because if I tell all of you, many of you will be too jealous. All of that is because this woman said to Jesus, I believe in you and I believe in Edekai Mary. And that's it. That's all she told Jesus. Whenever she called me, she would tell me, I believe in you. I believe in what you can do. You are the Jesus that I can see. Yes. You are the God that I can see. Yes, amen. This woman woke up last week. Amen. This woman woke up last week. And something that she did for her children so that her children can be in the best colleges in Chicago, the best universities. And what happened? You want to use your own money to send your children to school in America? Are you crazy? It's a lot for you to pay. Your paycheck is not enough for you to send your children to the best colleges. Where? In the world, it's not enough. It's like it's like you are taking your entire paycheck for a year to go and pay just for one of them. So normally, we parents we put our life on the line for them. We sign something for them. And there are some children who will consume about two hundred thousand, one hundred and something thousand. Her own kid, they got big, big, big ones. Big, 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 big bills. Big ones. And what happened to her last week was what I told her last year and this year. And I've said it over and over again to her what was going to happen. Over and over. And I was, I was telling her, God is going to visit you money-wise. God will visit you money-wise. And out of nowhere, God performs something. Many of you are looking for God to do debt cancellation for you. God doesn't do debt cancellation. Especially when you went into it. You went and signed for it. God doesn't do debt cancellation. Just as you sign for it, that's how you will unsign for it. You pay for it. But if because there was a need for it, children need to go to college and acquire a degree and finish it, had daughter and her son they finish it each of them has a master's degree they are well placed in life everything they ask everything the mother has asked me to ask jesus to give to her they've gotten it all but who will pay the debt Amen. who paid the debt for sending the kids is this girl and i said i'm going to make sure that every burden is taken away from you because you have entered into the spirit and atmosphere of prosperity. Seven years. There's a seven years of prosperity. When I told all of you in January, even before January 1st, 2022, that the earth is going to go through atmosphere and spirit of bad things. Famine. And plague. COVID is a small one. That the world will not recover for the next seven years. And that is the time for our own prosperity of harvesting. Seven years of plague and famine and problems and warfare is seven years of prosperity, riches and well-building for us. So that by the time the world come back, to prosperity, we are already in riches and wealth. That's the game. If you don't know the game, know it now. Amen. 
Are you all getting it? I'm saying it in public. Yes. Yes. Take this very, very serious. I said what I said in January. Go and listen to the January program. And before January programs, go and listen to what was being prophesied. And the earth has been under recession. Within four months or five months, Britain has fired four or five exchequers. Ministers of Finance, they fired about four or five. Now they want to fire uh, Liz. They want to fire her now. Because they, they now see that she cannot even deliver. England is, is in trouble. Yeah. Russia has been bankrolling Ukraine. Ukraine has been taking and eating from everybody. The day of the prostitute will come. But God will be merciful on Ukraine. Because after this, after this, Ukraine will learn its lesson that it needs to stand on its ground and not allow outside forces to meddle with its own government and its own people. They're now learning. Because Russians were buying Ukrainians. Yep. Using them. By the time Eliezer reached the city where he went to, the atmosphere and spirit of favor was waiting for him. So life was easy. It was easy. Coincidences and chances just kick in. Bam! That's it. And Rebecca was the product of that. And she went with him to go and be a wife to Isaac. It must come from God. It must be God who put it together. See, if somebody is trying to do good things for you, and you don't feel good about it, I'm not talking about being a suspicious person. I'm talking about there are things you see that you don't feel like about it. Say thank you and walk away. Lizzie is a shining example for us. Elizabeth is. Many of you think that God does debt cancellation. God doesn't do debt cancellation. There is a different thing God does. For people, you got into debt because you have to go to your job. It's not that you bought a car and you keep the car at home. Not using it to do anything, just for fun, just for issue. But you need that car to take your kid to school. That's understandable. To go shopping for them and for yourself, that's understandable. To go and pay your bills, that's understandable. To take them and go on vacation, that's understandable. Take them to school. Church activities. In the right church that is our own. But if you have one car already, you are making car note on it. And then, because others have bought a Lexus or a Mercedes or BMW, you also go and double into debt and buy it. When you didn't need it, you will never fall into spirit and atmosphere of favor. It will not follow you. So sensitivity is going to be needed. But if you collected a loan, a debt, because of children need to go to school, make sure that you are putting your signature to sign for children who will finish that education and get the certificate and go to work. If not, if you sign it, God will not pay it. Are you guys listening? If you sign for any money, and the children go to school, and they don't finish, God is not going to pay for it. Because God does not double in starting without finishing. 
if you go and borrow money to go and do funeral, borrow money to go and do baptism and ordination, borrow money to go and do marriage, wedding, borrow money to go and buy extra car to show up, borrow money to go to school that you can't finish, God is not going to pay for it. If you go and borrow money to send to people in Africa, in the Caribbean, in the Middle East, or people you saw on Facebook, and you want God to come and pay you, or you go and take money that you should have used to send to us, you start sending it to other pastors that you think they have more power than myself. So that they can pray for you or work miracle for you. God is not going to pay for that money. You are going to lose it. You should know this by now. If the money you should use to pay rent, you go and blow it somewhere else, God is not going to pay for it. You should know it by now. If the money that you should have put aside for yourself, for God to bless, you're using it to manize or you're using it to womanize, that's why, you know, we only hear of womanizer, the person is a womanizer. What about, what about the woman being a manizer? What about that? And you think God is coming to pay for your fun? God is not going to pay for your fun. He's not going to pay for your alcohol and your cigarette. He's not going to pay for the money you borrow to do those nonsense. Why is it that somebody has died, you don't bury the person? Instead, you are going to get a loan to go and bury somebody that has died? That person that has died is of no profit to you. Because the question you should always ask yourself is, this thing that I'm going to do, how much profit am I going to get out of it? The people who are coming to eat and drink, how much money are they going to give back to me? Can I triple the money I'm going to spend from them? No. If the answer is no, don't do it. Did you know that sometimes you'll walk into somewhere and you never knew that that is the place? Spirit and atmosphere of favor is in that place. Esther walked into the palace. It took her some time for her to realize that this place carries spirit and atmosphere of favor. But who is the favor here? Because a human being is going to be a favor for you. Events are going to be the favor. Opportunity is going to be the favor. So that is why God wants you to ask him for the gift of discernment. The gift of sensitivity. And the gift of suspicion. You must have three of them. If you don't have this, you must have this. If you don't have that, you must have that. Esther said, there must be favor in this place. There must be favor here. We cannot all just be the same. There must be favor here. If there was no favor here, the kind of God that I and my uncle we worship, will not allow me to be brought into this place. So why am I here? Where is the favor here? Sensitivity told her, the favor is the trainer. The one that prepares the women for who will be a queen. The one that takes care of all the concubines and provides for them on behalf of the king. That's the favor. So Esther called the man and said, uh, please, please, can I talk to you? He said, yep, yep. Uh, can I talk to you in, um, in um, can I talk to you in private? The man said, all right, all right, all right. Um, I don't know why they brought me here. I have no idea. But um, uh, there, there is no more queen in the land, in the empire. And I'm one of those. The, the man said, yeah, I know. You are one of the girls that is brought here to be trained to be 
and provide it for to, to see whether you fit to be a queen. He said, yeah, you know me already. You have, you've been providing for me like the, the servant have been providing for me too. But I have to ask you for something. <laughs> and he said, what is it? Then can I whisper in your ears? He said, yes, yes, girl, yeah. He said, um, um, I'm talking like girls used to talk to me. This is how, this is how girls talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you you know that little girls are just fun. They are really a lot of fun. He said, but let me ask you this. You see, everybody's given the same thing. But can you make a queen out of me? Do you think I can be a queen? The man said, Yes, you can. He said, is there anything you can do for me to be a queen? I will be so appreciative. If I become a queen, I will make sure that I promote you even more. He said, if you become a queen, you will promote me. And the little girl goes, oh yeah, I will. I'll make sure that I take care of you like nobody has ever taken care of you. Because by that time, I'm a queen. <laughs> And the man look at this innocent oh girl. God. Look at this innocent girl because Esther was a girl. Mm -hmm. He look at this innocent, fragile little girl. Just turn young adults. He said, "Is that all you want to tell me?" Yes, sir. I I will listen to you. Everything you will ever ask me to do, I will do it. I mean, if there is something extra that I have to do, and also I want to know what do the king like to eat? What do the king, um, what kind of clothes should I dress? What conversation? How do, how do queens behave? I don't know how queens do things. I don't know. I do not want to walk into the presence of the king and shame myself and become just a concubine. Because I know I will not return back to my family. I will be like the rest of the women. I do not want that. Please help me. Ask and finish it. Ask and it shall be. given unto you. Seek and you will find. find. Knock and the door will be open for you. Open. 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 And that man look at this young adult. None of the girls who came to be trained to be a queen was sensitive enough to negotiate to bargain, to ask for extra help. I am the one who is massaging myself. I am the one who is trying to, I don't even know how to use all these lotions, all these creams, all this moisturizer. I don't know which is which. I didn't, I was not brought up with cosmetics. I was not brought up with oil with lipstick and earrings and hairdo, I wasn't. And here am I. I need somebody to help me. And the man said, yeah, I will give you women and they will be the one to massage you and to teach you what I can teach you. I will make you into a queen. A trainer is looking for somebody who is careful, natural, positive, and who believe in him. Just as Liz, Lizzie said to me, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus and I believe in you. Esther believed in that man 100% and trusted her life into the hand of the trainer, of the queen maker, and the keeper of the women. 
And that man began to give Esther extra. He will give everybody a general brand. Made, made for Walmart by China. Everybody received the same thing. But then he will turn around and tell, and tell the people under him, uh, come here. Uh, I want you to give her this extra, this extra, this extra, this extra. With her food, add this to that food. Add this supplement. It make her extra soft, extra smooth, extra this. This will make her hair grow more like the king like it. Begin to try so some so kind of necklaces, jewelries on her, anklets, gold, diamond on her. And they began to make Esther different in front of everybody. And nobody knew what was happening. Her color changed. Her countenance changed. She was at peace. It means that secretly the trainer was taking Esther to tutor Esther. After everybody has been tutored, everybody has been trained, Esther now goes for private lesson. So, there is always something that is not for everybody. And the trainer is looking for one or two people who qualify for what is not for everybody. And Esther alone qualified for that. Little did Esther know that when she walked into that palace, spirit and atmosphere of favor has already gone ahead of her. And God was moving her to exercise sensitivity, asking for help with the right person. She did not go to say, I'll give you sex in exchange for this, for a job. I'll give you a kiss in exchange for that. I'll give you my sister to marry in exchange for this. No. Nope. I'll give you crack cocaine and marijuana in exchange for that. No. Nope. You make me a queen, I'll take care of you. And she meant it. Because many people don't mean what they say. When one they assume that position, they forget about everybody. And that is why God does not create spirit and atmosphere of favor for a lot of people. It's because he has already seen how they are going to trample and trash people. So God refused. And the people will wander and wander in the wilderness till the day they die. They struggle with their paycheck. They struggle with their children's paycheck. Nothing will be able to satisfy. Because they are careless. They are arrogant. They are proud. I told a lady, when you leave this phone, because she was talking, I was in that office, so when you leave this phone, an atmosphere and spirit of favor is going to be created for you. You will find yourself among military guys. And all of them are like from captain, major, colonels, brigadiers, and generals. You are going to meet them. Event will be created in which you will be there. That's what I told her. I don't know how I know, but that is what happened. I always know it come on me, and then the word comes. It's knowledge that is outside this world. For me to know what is inside this world. Or what God is going to do. How he's going to create an event for you. And I will be given the spirit of wisdom as to know how to put it to you. So that you are not afraid 
or go there and be careless. And the girl went. This lady went. She left the phone. And boom. Just like that. Spirit and atmosphere of favor moved. And she was, she found herself among army, the military people. Mostly they were army. And I said to her, be ready to negotiate for what you want when you will be in their presence. Don't go. Don't go for the small boys. Go for the big boys. Go for the generals. Go for the brigadiers. And one of them is a tall, slim man. He's a very nice man. He will greet you. And then he will want to talk to you. Listen to him and follow him. He's a good man. What you see is what you get. She went. Exactly what I said happened. They were having a small gathering. And somebody brought her there. She didn't know it was among these big military people. The atmosphere, the spirit of favor was ripe. And the man said, Hi, how are you? What's your name? And the person that brought was trying to introduce, and this girl did not even know that that man is a general. And the man is, hello, how are you? Can I offer you food? She said, hey, hey, back off. You back off. Back off right now. Everybody like, what the heck? Here? Yeah? Because they've never seen that kind of a thing in a military gathering. I learned my lesson that a lot of people who will call me or try to meet with me for me to perform miracles for them, to create something for them, many of them have mental issues. And that's why they've never had good things happening to them. And they don't want to go to the hospital and get checked. And others are people who are naturally arrogant. Do you know that you will find people, men and women, who don't have nothing? But they are very proud and arrogant. Like they have it all. So because of it, God will not do nothing for them. And human will not do nothing for them. They will rather die. They are like mules. Back up. They are like mules. They will rather die poor. Die sick. Than ask for help. They are human beings like that. And this girl is both mentally. Their family have that thing going on for all of them. And also, they are naturally arrogant people. They are people like that. And she was telling you, back off, man! Back off! Who the hell do you think you are? He's talking to a general. Who the hell do you think you are? Are you serious? The general went, went back and, uh, and, and uh, talked to the people and said, who brought this? fool here. Who brought this person here? Other ladies who were there were like shell-shocked. And the person that brought her said, can, can we go? And she like, where are we going? Where are we going? Are we not going to eat and enjoy with them? The person said, please, can we go out? Can we? And then the, the, somebody in army uniform then came out and said, please, can you hit the door? And they were coming to apologize to the general. The, some military people there, they came to apologize to the general. He said, I understand. And they took her and out they put her in the car and they left that place. They told her that they don't want to ever see her face, ever. They are the people you wanna you wanna you wanna pay a bill for them. They said, no, no, thank you very much. I've I've handled it already. They've not handled nothing. 
And the next time you see them, they are walking on foot. You ask, where is your car? You say, oh, um, they will formulate a story to tell you why they are not driving the car anymore. The repo man came and got it. They are not able to help themselves. They, they, they just completely useless. I've discovered this is spirit. And also, there are people, I didn't know how much the spirit of competition, the spirit of sabotage, the spirit of conflict, and and the and the uh, the spirit of a fool, how they work together. I didn't know that these were strong agents on the earth. Strong, strong, strong agents on the earth. The spirit of a fool, the spirit of sabotage, and the spirit of conflict. They go together. And I had no idea until recently. I began to see something. I began to say, "Wow." I began to see that poor people, many of them, are richer than rich people. And yet they can't keep money. Because immediately they get their paycheck, the party begin, the drinking begin, the smoking begin, the sex begin, the shopping begins, and all that they are shopping for is nothing. That same money can be the money they put down for a house. They will not do it. It's like drug dealers and prostitutes and scammers. They never buy homes. Majority of them, they never buy homes. They buy a car, put it in somebody else's name. At the end of the day, when one they get busted, the money that they have been hiding is taken away, even in their bank account is taken away. The government will take away everything. If they were able to buy a house, it's taken from them. Cars are taken. It's always like that. When God bring you to a place where spirit and atmosphere of favor is at work, be sensitive enough to know that there will be a place that you need to speak for yourself. Joseph spoke in the presence of Pharaoh. The spirit and atmosphere of favor was already there. That's why they call him to come. How you know is that they will invite you to come. Amanda has her birthday, had her birthday yesterday. She went for an interview to have an extra job for the two days that she will be off to make extra money. She called me to pray for her and said, this is not a prayer thing. I told her, I've gone ahead of you. I didn't say Jesus. I have gone ahead of you because that's what I was told to tell her. To that interview, I will be in you so that you are not going there to tell them any any story they don't need story they want you to tell them happy things about your life not bad experiences when you go there you are only going for formality she said really i say yes so i'm not praying don't deal she went when she came back I said, how did it go? She said, there was not really any interview. By the time I reached, I found out that the woman who was interviewing me was a woman I used to work with in my old job. So there was no interview. <laughs> there was nothing like that. And they gave me the job. So you just went there to go and drink coffee or tea ate their food, and then they gave you a job. She said, yeah. Because I have a dad. And his name is Aidika Imerai. So she got the job. And that is just it. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah. you should be thinking. You should wake up like Elizabeth and call me shouting. And say, I have no debt. No debt. My kids have no debt. Why? Because 
spirit and atmosphere of favor kicking. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what you need. Yeah. Be sensitive. And many a times God will even bypass your sensitivity because of who you are with him and with me. Because God is looking at the way you treat me in order to respond to the way you treat him. You cannot bypass me to God. Please listen very carefully. God is looking at the way you treat your spiritual leader to determine the way he will respond to you. God has put somebody on earth on your behalf to be the medium, to be the symbol of him to pass through to do whatever he has to do on the earth for you and for others. So he's looking at how you talk to the person, how you honor the person, how you care for the person, how you work with the person to determine how he, God, will create something for you. That's why I said to Mary, as long as I am on the earth, you cannot suffer. Christina called me talking to me about Josiah two days ago. I said, leave it for me. I'll take care of him. And Christina, what you've been dealing with, has been taken away from your shoulder. The atmosphere and spirit of favor has been created for you. It's not that cancellation, it's something else completely. The same thing I told Anna. And I'm not gonna say what it is in public because it's a sacred thing. It's something that is too big to be spoken about. So you can be looking for debt cancellation. We are playing to that game. It's something completely different. Rustling, the same thing is going to happen to you. The same thing. Spirit and atmosphere of favor has gone ahead of you. Every one of you. Spirit and atmosphere of favor has gone ahead of you. It has gone ahead of you. No. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. And Amen. each of you, Sunday like this, so, each of so. you, each of you will testify. Because you were born to testify. You were born to declare. You were born to testify. And you are going to testify that you were born for favor. Since you were born for favor, that's why you are born to testify. You are going to testify. Whether you like it or not, something good will happen that will make you testify. And you will be a fool to walk away from me, walk away from what we are doing, or play the game. After you've seen what God has done for you. I didn't say what God will do for you today. I say what God has done for you. Amen. So don't, don't try to tell uh, uh, God, uh, God I don't have money to purchase this, to do this, to pay for this. Don't pray those kind of silly prayers anymore. Don't pray and tell God that you don't have money. Whether I see the money in my hand or I don't see the money, the money is in my hand. That's the way children of God pray. Amen. Do you get it? Whether I see the money in my hand or I do not see the money. Whether I see it in my bank account or I don't see it. Whether I see it. Whether you put money under your pillow or wherever you put. Whether you see it or you don't see it. I see the money. Jesus said to Thomas. Blessed are those who do not see but they believe. That's what he said. Blessed are those who. They didn't see it but they believe. You want to see it before you believe. God, the, the planet of God do not behave that way. The planet of God, they turn, they turn the thing upside down. For us, it is seeing is believing. Are you guys listening? For our planet, it is seeing is believing. 
For God's planet it is believing, is seeing. Hey, you didn't hear me. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Where are the let, let me tell you guys? Obedience is better than sacrifice. To hearken than the facts of Ram. I've told all of you, when you come to any of our service, come with your whistles, come with your noisemakers, come with them. That is how God will know how serious you are. Let's continue. Let's continue. In the kingdom of humans, seeing is what? Believing. Seeing is believing. Until I see it, I will not believe it. That's how human being. That's the world in which you operate. That's it. And that makes sense. But it does not make sense in the planet of God. It does not make sense in the belief system of God. <laughs> Are you guys listening? Maybe you've never heard this before, but now you're hearing it. Don't say to God that he did not give you a good, a good teacher, a good rabbi. Don't say he didn't give you a good teacher. He gave to you in me. In our world, the logic is, until I see it, then I will believe it. Believe it. But when it comes to our kingdom, the kingdom of our Father and our Jesus, theirs is different. Their method is different. It is believing is seeing. Amen. Believing Amen. is seeing. Amen. Do you get it? Amen. Yeah. Yes. It's two different methods. So if you want to belong, you have to choose which kingdom you want. Either you want to belong to the kingdom of mad men like myself, the kingdom of mad people, uh -huh. <laughs> which is believing is seeing that the kingdom of mad people, or you want to belong to the kingdom of, of uh, normal people, seeing is believing. So you have to choose which side, because I'm not going to, I'm not, I do not want to pastor people who are normal. Normal people are not fun to work with. Yeah, normal people. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Normal people are not fun to work with. When you <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> oh God, oh. oh my Lord, this is awesome. I'm loving this today. Oh man, this is awesome. You see, normal people are not fun. They are not fun because they are waiting to see it before they believe it. But mad children are fun. Mad kids are fun to work with. Mommy says she will buy me a bicycle. And they are already jubilating. Bicycle has not been seen. Mommy said when she comes back from work, she's going to cook me my best food. You know? I'm so happy. They're already telling you how happy they are. Food has not yet been cooked. Mom has not yet come home. They're already telling you that, oh my gosh, the food mom is going to cook is going to be the best. I'm going to share with everybody. I'm so happy. Mom is bringing me my bicycle. They don't even know whether you have the money to buy the bike or you don't have the money. But they're already telling their, their, their colleagues in school, say, my mom is buying me a bicycle. I will be riding my bike to school. I'm telling you, this woman, she's the best mother ever. That 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 baby boy, that baby girl has not seen no bicycle. Doesn't know whether you have a dime in your bank account, but it's already bragging about the bicycle in school with the teachers it's everywhere. It's true. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sally and 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 Annie's Annie's daughter. My daughter, Sally, is telling the senior daughter, Joan. He's saying to Joan, let me tell you, my father that lives in America is very rich. I know it. I see it. Joan said, I know, I know. He said, let me tell you, if you keep treating me wrong, the little one is telling the senior one, if you keep treating me wrong, when I go to America, I am not bringing you not even a chocolate. I won't. She's already bragging about it. When I go there, ha, hey, I'm bringing luggages full of good things. 
and you are not, I'm not by, I will tell my daddy not to even buy you, not even a chocolate. So you better treat me right. You see, that girl is already using me for leverage to bargain for what she wants with the senior daughter, with the senior sister. Can you believe that? <laughs> Believing is seeing. You see, that is the kind of people I want yeah. to, I want to, I want to be around me. I'm mad people. People who logically, rationally, cognitively, empirically doesn't make no sense. But existentially and humanly, they make sense. Amen. They make rational sense to God, but they don't make rational sense to us in our planet. And do you know why Satan came to come and disturb people here on the earth, Adam and Eve? He came to destroy the way the kingdom that set them up do business. Believing is seeing. Wow. And he's coming to tell them, you wow. must see to believe. That's what the devil came and, and created all this nonsense. It was not seeing. Seeing is believing did not create you. Seeing is believing did not create the mind realm. Seeing is believing did not create the natural world. Seeing is believing did not create humans and animals and all you see. It is the other mad side. The mad side that says believing is seeing created everything including you. So why are you not like them? Why don't you behave like them? Why don't you believe before you see it? What is wrong with you? So don't tell the people I don't have no money. Are you serious? You don't have no money. Because you are saying that because you belong to normal people. You don't belong to our kingdom. Our kingdom is kingdom of mad people. Crazy people. It's kingdom of mad men and mad women. Believing is seeing. And Jesus said to Thomas, Blessed are you. You didn't see but you believe. That's right. Huh? Have you ever seen a mad person crying? Very rare. Have you ever seen a mad person? No, sure. You never see. No. They are always happy. They are always wanting to talk to somebody. They are always telling you what they know. Mad people are like that. Yeah. And those are the people. God is looking for mad men and mad women who can follow that kingdom. Yeah. Amen. The, the, it's not madness that is produced by marijuana or drugs or alcohol or mm -hmm. all this other thing. It's madness that is <laughs> produced by the law and principles of their kingdom. Anybody who believes in Jesus can apply it. But believe me, if you want to follow Jesus this way, he's going to turn you into a mad person. You'll be telling the people, you'll be telling the people, I see it. I see it. There will be a limousine parked here. The other day I called a handyman to come and measure the, how, how long the limousine will be, whether it will fit into this place. He came, he said that I can fit three cars here. And I have, and I have, I went there and told the place I parked the car. Listen, I was not telling God. I was telling my car parking place. I was telling the car parking place, the ground there, that a limousine is coming to be parked here. And that I'm letting him know. I'm letting, I'm letting it know ahead of time. Are you guys listening to me? I'm telling the ground, I'm telling the parking place, the parking lot, that listen, a limousine is coming to you. So I have to tell you, before it arrives, so that you said, I, do, I don't want you to say that I did not tell you that the limousine is coming here. And then I went to the back, I went to the back of the Cadillac, and I told the, the, the ground, the parking place by there, I said, a, 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 a Rolls Royce is coming to park behind you. Since a Rolls Royce will cost more money and look more luxurious, so Cadillac, I don't want you to be angry at me that I am I'm treating you like second class. I'm going to push you forward, so that you will be kissing the butt of the of the of the limousine, and the uh, yeah, uh -huh. but the Rolls Royce will be behind you. So I'm just letting you know so that you don't start getting jealous and angry. You have to 
Well, it has to be there because it's, it's an American car. I like my American car. Yeah. So, people, please listen to this. You have to walk to your bedroom and you carry a picture of how you want the bedroom to be. And you start telling the bed, bed, you are not, you are not, you are not going to be here. I'm sorry. I'm just coming here to tell you, bedroom, that this is how you are going to look. And everything that you've been enjoying here is going to go because you've been upgraded. You are telling the bedroom that it has been upgraded. <laughs> you are telling the bedroom you have been upgraded. You walk, you walk into your laundry, you are telling the laundry, you say, you see, uh, you washing machines, I greet you. I greet all of you in the name of Jesus or whatever you guys believe in. But I'm here to inform you that you've been upgraded. You are going to go. You you be you you will be parked somewhere where a washing machine in one of our rental property break down. We will give you. We will donate. Uh, we will put you in those houses. So you still belong to me, but something better is coming in here. So I don't want you guys to be jealous to be here when these ones come. You'll be going. You let them know. You walk into your office, you wow. do the same thing. You go to your wardrobe, you start to tell the wardrobe. You say, you all you clothes, I've been wearing you for the last 10 years. You have to go. Jesus said that you have to go. I've been upgraded. And you show them pictures of the kind of clothes you will want to be wearing. And the kind of shoes, healthy shoes you'll be wearing. You say, you shoes, see what you've done to my leg. My leg are all cracked open because of you. You are all going. I don't need you guys anymore. You know, you've done your job already. I'm grateful. You start talking to you start talking to things. Amen. The Vietnamese Amen. family came. Uh, uh, they came. They came the other day and planted a flower in the front. No, no, no. It was it was about two months ago. They planted a flower. When they planted it, they kissed the flower, and they were talking to the flower how they wanted to grow. So I was asking, what are you guys saying to the flower? They said they are telling the flower that they love it. That they are passing their love to, to the flower, to the plant. And that they want the plant to grow to be a big, nice plant. That when I come out to the front porch, that that plant has been put there to always wave at me and make me happy. So they understand this already. Believing is seeing. Not seeing is believing. Okay, so let me tell you how this goes. If you are going to be on the side of seeing is believing, you won't make much money on the earth. Especially those of us who were not born into rich families. Rich uncle, rich aunties, rich family members who have established businesses that are making money. They are billionaires and trillionaires. We were not born into those things. So if you are going to be in the in the in the in the kingdom of normal people, you will be stuck with your salary. You will be stuck with people who also they are struggling with what they got. But if you step over to the to this other kingdom, you will become richer than the people in this other kingdom. That's how it goes. Because the kingdom of mad people, the mad men and mad women kingdom, is better than this other one. The the the, the money you need is there without stress. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Yep. He talks about easy, light. So you'll be making money and living a life that is stress free. You are not going to be pursuing money. You die before the money will even come. You look at a lot of classical musicians, writers of famous books, great movie makers. They died and they are, and what they did didn't make the money. If you step into our kingdom, the kingdom of mad men and mad women, you will live, you will be enjoying while the thing is happening. You are enjoying, you are enjoying, you are enjoying. So, I belong to the kingdom of mad men and mad women, and it is giving us everything now. So, there's nothing like saying, I don't have money. 
I don't have money in my bank account. I don't have money in my pocket. I don't have money. I only struggle with this paycheck. That's not what people in my kingdom says. Jesus said, thy kingdom come. Which means he's on. The laws and principle of spirit and atmosphere of favor is on for you. Anywhere you walk into is happening for you. Why? You choose to be a madman and a madwoman. Why do I say that? Because you are not on the principle of seeing is believing. You are on the logic of believing is seeing. And people are going to laugh at you. How are you going to do this? And when will this happen? It's like those of you who are in training, in the house of training and formation. And I've been telling you guys, well, you are all going to go into pure academic things. And everybody was relaxed and happy. You'll come and sit down. And I was telling you about how you're going to be a priest. We are not yet done even with our studies. And everybody was nice until two nights ago it started coming. It didn't stop. <laughs> it didn't stop. It started coming. And nobody, even Samantha, that loves me like like Ibohima, never called. And a fled. Uzo will always pick the phone and call me to discuss politics and discuss. If I send Uzo anything, Uzo will call me quickly and start discussing it. Uzo fled. Uzo never called. Never heard from Uzo. Yep. Everybody fled. Rosalind that will call me. If, I, if I'm not there, she will leave me a text message. Hello, Bishop. Darling, give me a call when you have time. Never seen no text message, nothing. Everybody ran away. There you go. <laughs> so, God knows that you've chosen to step into this side with Jesus. Believing is seeing. Believing is getting. Believing is riches. Believing is health. Believing is abundance. Believing is miracles. With believing, you take over what exists in the seeing is believing. Are you listening? Those who are in the madman's club will take over what is in the normal people's club. Are you listening? Because what is with the normal people, they will not be able to maintain it and retain it for long. They are constantly selling. Until somebody comes from the madman's and mad women's club and step into the normal club and then they can retain it and maintain it. You know why? Because they carry the spirit of the Lord. Ha! They know how to work with money. Hallelujah. They know how to handle people. Negotiate with people. Normal people don't. Normal people get angry easily. Mad people don't. The mad club of Jesus don't. So you have to choose which side you want to go. On the side where because the atmosphere and the spirit of favor is with, with the abnormal people. It's with the abnormal kingdom. Yep. For example, does it make sense that some angels have wings to fly and some angel doesn't have wings and they still fly? Does it make any sense? Huh? Does it make any sense? That's madness. No. Your mind cannot comprehend that. Some angels have six wings. Some have four wings. Some have two wings. Some doesn't have. And they still fly. Amen. Hallelujah. Get it. <sighs> God will buy it for you. Humans will give it to you. You will pay for it. It will be coming in different. It will be coming in different types. 
A lot of things about God does not make no sense. It doesn't make sense. So those who want to make sense, good luck. You stay with sense things. Please listen. Those who want everything to make sense, you will be stuck with things and you are going to wait for a long time for things to make sense. It takes long for things to make sense. But I belong to the mad people's club. It takes a second for everything to make sense. Does it make sense that somebody died after three days you see the person coming out? Will you not run? Yeah. And because Mary Magdalene belonged to the club of mad people, she went to go and embrace a dead man that has come back to life. She didn't even know whether that was a zombie or not. But she recognized that Jesus. A member of the, the, the president of the mad, mad men's club, mad men and mad women's club. That's Jesus. He's the president of them. <laughs> the alpha and the omega of mad people's club of believing in sin. Do you not see how Jesus went to heaven? Did you hear that Jesus went on a chariot like Elijah? And by the way, where did the chariot come from? Why will a chariot come from the sky? No. Eh? Does it make sense that people are, are flying chariots in the sky? How do they do it? Whoa. Does it make any sense? The no. chariots of fire. No. No. Where is the road? Where is no. the where is the highway that they are they, that that chariots, horses? We are talking of horses on a chariot. Where are they coming from? Who put them together? What kind of horses are those? Are those horses? Those are physical horses. And they fire too. And fire too. Are you serious? Does it make any sense? Logically speaking, no. How did Jesus go into heaven? He says he started going up and up. And that's what we hear. Does it make sense that Jesus had no wings and yet he's flying up like a witch up in the sky? Are you serious? Does it make any sense? Huh? How do angels, no. how are angels suspended in the sky singing Christmas carol for the shepherds to hear? Does it make any sense? Nope. So, welcome to the land where nothing makes sense. <laughs> welcome to the land where nothing makes sense because that is where that is where spirit and atmosphere of the miraculous of favor happens is only with this group is only in the side in this side you have to work hard though just be prepared you will first walk like a dog then you will start walking like a mule then you'll start walking like a donkey then you have to work hard though you have to work hard like a camel until you break down and retire i'm telling you the truth yep and by the time you reach 50 and 60 wrinkles wrinkly cranky unhappy cursing out because you want to make sense yeah. and if you want to make sense spirit and atmosphere of favor is not going to follow you because it's not in your kingdom it is in this other kingdom so i will go to where the good things are that's where i'm going my mary has cooked good food lizzie has cooked good chapati good curry I'm going there. Yeah, <laughs> Vivian has cooked some flying fish. Oh, I'm going there. Oh. <laughs> yes, oh. <laughs> Emily has cooked some trotters. Emily has cooked some trotters. You know, you know, you know what trotters is. I'm not gonna say it for those of you who don't eat those kind of things. I'm going there. <laughs> yes, oh. <laughs> Ma Mary has cooked some bankuo and some palm nut soup. I'm going there. I'm going to where it doesn't make sense, but the thing is there. Nyafu nyafu. Nyafu nyafu. Plenty. Plenty is with the mad people. It's not with this side. No way. I want you to ask God to send the spirit and atmosphere of favor ahead of you this week and to make you fall into it you come you fall into it it's an atmosphere you see it's like smoke 
It's like smoke. Sometimes when I see the spirit of favor, it's like smoke that envelope a place. You walk in, people are already asking you. I was looking for a car to buy one time. People listen to this story. I was looking for a car to buy one time. I went to the car dealership. I didn't find anything. Then I went to the auction. Not really. I didn't find anything that was better than the Chrysler LeBaron I was driving at that time. I didn't see. Then something keep telling me, don't buy, don't buy, don't buy. I say, is it God telling me? I say, Holy Ghost, are you talking to me? Then I say, yes. Don't buy any car. Don't buy any car. I say, why? He said, he just kept quiet. He just kept telling me, don't buy, don't buy, don't buy. So I, I, I stopped. I said, I'm not looking. Stop looking. Don't go looking. People will call me to come and buy their car. The Holy Spirit said, don't buy. Keep your money. Don't buy. Two weeks after that, my boss called me into his office. Say, follow me. I follow him. Say, look out the window. So I look out the window. What did I see? Say, you see that light green car? It's a Mercury Grand Marquis. I say, yes. He said, there's a family, a white family came here, husband and a wife. And they say, you know that, that, uh, that boy that is the, the that that is the supervisor or director in the in the men's uh, alcohol and drug program that is helping people to recover and give them jobs. He said, "Yeah, you mean you mean I the car?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." He said, "That's him. Give him this key. Give him this title to the car. That is his car." Up till today, I don't know who they are. Up till today, I do not know who they are. And he gave me the key. He gave me the title to the car. And then I asked one of my students to drive my old car. I now drove the new car. He followed me to the house. I now have two cars. Can you believe that? Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. The atmosphere, the spirit of favor. They, it will even come unannounced. You are not even prepared for it. And it is there. Amen. It is there. Suddenly somebody called you to come and get a job. A job that pays you about 300000 a year. You are not prepared for it. You didn't do anything to qualify for it. But it is for you. Do you think all these people mm -hmm. earning million dollars in a year in their job that they actually qualify for it? No, it's simply because somebody who owned that job is good to them. Somebody recommended them that they be in that place, that they are good people. So why do you think you are not better than them? Amen. I am sure of what I'm telling you this morning or this afternoon. I'm very sure of it. And I'm telling you the truth before God and before this planet many of you are going to come back with so much harvest that my life will change because of your life. Because of your wealth. Amen. It will change Amen. me. Amen. My life will... Hmm, you have no idea. What God is going to do because of the service of today that we have spoken about spirit and atmosphere of favor. You have no idea what's going to happen to you. Because God is going to overtake you by surprise. You are going to be overtaken by surprise. Yes. You are going to be overtaken by surprise this week. You have no idea the kind of God that you've decided to follow. But he's ready for you. He is ready for you. Hallelujah. Go home and celebrate your weekend. Go home and celebrate your weekend. I will see you guys on Wednesdays, on Friday, and on Sunday. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.